let's do some crucial astrophysics revision. How do we find the speed of a satellite? Well, we said the gravitational force equal to the resultant centripetal force. The gravitational force or its magnitude can be given by just g m m over r squared and that will be equal to the resultant centripetal force which will just be equal to mv squared divided by r. Let's do a little bit of cancellations. The mass can go, the radius can go, and what we're left with is that the speed of a satellite is just given by the square root of gm over r. Notice that if the satellite is just going in a circular orbit, we can also just use v is equal to 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle, divided by the time period, distance over time. Kepler's third law, its derivation is all about setting the two forces equal one another. So similarly to this, I'm going to say that gmm over r squared is equal to mv squared divided by r. Um, let's do the standard amount of cancellations like that. And what we're left with is that gm over r is equal to v squared. Now, rather than just v squared, I'm going to plug in this expression 2 pi r over t into here. Now, what am I going to get? If I square this, I'm going to get 4, which is 2 squared, pi squared, r squared, then divided by t squared. Oops, I've noticed that here I've used capital R. Let's just be consistent. Okay, now we can rearrange this so I can bring this r over here. So what I'm left with is that gm is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed divided by t squared. And my final step of the rearrangement is to just rearrange for t squared. So t squared will be given by 4 pi squared divided by gm multiplied by r cubed. And this here is Kepler's third law. It is also worth revising quickly the first two laws. Kepler's first law, the orbit of a planet, is an ellipse with the sun at one of the foci. Kepler's law number two, a line segment joining the sun and a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal times. <laughs> To derive the escape velocity equation, all we need to do is set the gravitational potential energy, which remember is gmm divided by r, not by r squared. Set that equal to the kinetic energy, which is a half mv squared. And um, then we're gonna cancel those out. Let's rearrange for v, so v will be 2gm divided by r square rooted and this here is the escape velocity. Let's do one more and that will be the height of a geostationary orbit. This is best done via Kepler's third law which we've derived over here. So t squared will be given by 4 pi squared divided by gm r cubed. Now in a geostationary orbit, the orbital period, if we're talking about the Earth, will match the orbital period of the Earth, which is 24 hours. So uh, for my t squared will just be 24 hours in seconds. Now let's calculate the distance r to the center of the Earth. So r cubed will be t squared gm divided by 4 pi squared. Now I am just going to cube root everything. And I'm really aware that I'm very likely to uh, forget a square either here or here or do something like square root where I should be cube rooting. So these are quite common mistakes that I'm going to try to avoid in an exam. Okay, so let's plug in some numbers across here. Those numbers will typically be given in the question. So this will be the cube root of t squared. So it's going to be 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds all squared multiplied by the gravitational uh, constant, which is 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11 multiplied by the mass of the Earth. If memory serves me right, let's call that around 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. Divide that by 4 pi squared. 
And if we put this into a calculator, we're going to get around 4.23 multiplied by 10 to the 7 meters. Keep in mind that this distance is actually the distance of the satellite. So let's say this here is the Earth and this here is the satellite. So from the satellite all the way to the center of the Earth, this is not drawn up to scale. So we've just calculated this distance. In order to work out the height of a geostationary satellite, we need to take away the radius of the Earth. So the height will just be 4.23 times 10 to the power of seven. Take away the radius of the Earth, which is 6,400, about 6,400 kilometers. So that will be times 10 to the power of Three, and that should give me around 3.6 times 10 to the power of 7 meters or so. Given that we're revising astrophysics, it would be rude not to be revising the gravitational potential. So typically in formula booklets, I think in most exam boards, is given with this potential symbol V, subscript G, which is given by minus GM divided by R. Now this here is not speed, it's also not V multiplied by G, it's just a subscript gravitational potential. It is defined as the work done to bring a unit mass from infinity to a point in a gravitational field. Because the gravitational potential energy is given by minus gmm over r, the gravitational potential really is just the energy per unit mass. If you're revising astrophysics, you absolutely need to revise this really important question on luminosity that can come up very often in past papers. This question is right over here.